Our topic is Permanency Planning and an Act Respecting First Nations, Inuit and Métis Children, Youth and Families. So what changes can we expect in child welfare practice as a result of the new legislation? The federal legislation titled an Act Respecting First Nations, Inuit and Métis Children, Youth and Families came into force in January 2020. The legislation reforms the way child welfare services are delivered to Indigenous children across Canada. We are moving from the old model where only provincial or territorial laws apply to one that affirms the inherent right of Indigenous peoples to exercise jurisdiction over child and family services. It ensures that Indigenous peoples can implement their own solutions for their children and families and emphasises the need to shift from removal to prevention. Under the federal legislation, Indigenous communities can exercise their right to develop policies and laws that guide child and family services based on their histories, cultures and circumstances, and many are working towards that goal. How does the federal legislation impact placement decisions related to Indigenous children? So when considering where Indigenous children are placed, primary consideration must be given to the child's physical, emotional and psychological safety, security and well-being. It's important that they have an ongoing relationship with their family and with the Indigenous group, community or people to which they belong. When it's consistent with the best interests of the child, permanency and placement decisions consider the following order of priority. Placement with one of the child's parents, placement with another adult member of the child's family, Placement with an adult who belongs to the same Indigenous group, community or people as the child. Placement with an adult who belongs to an Indigenous group, community or people other than the one to which the child belongs. Or placement with any other adult. There will also be consideration given to the proximity of other children who have the same parent or a member of the child's family. Foster parents often voice concerns about how the best interests of children in their care are determined. Some permanency or placement decisions may seem counterintuitive to what you believe is in the best interest of the child you are caring for. So in addition to considering a child's safety and well-being, connection to the family and connection to culture, the following criteria must be considered when determining the best interests of an Indigenous child or youth. The child's cultural, linguistic, religious and spiritual upbringing and heritage. The child's needs given the child's age and stage of development, such as the child's needs for stability. The nature and strength of the child's relationship with their parent, the care provider and any member of their family who plays an important role in their life the importance to the child of preserving their cultural identity and connections to the language and territory of the Indigenous group, community or people to which the child belongs, the child's views and preferences giving due weight to the child's age and maturity unless they cannot be ascertained, and any plans for the child's care including care in accordance with the customs or traditions of the Indigenous group community or people to which the child belongs. Any family violence and its impact on the child, including whether the child is directly or indirectly exposed to the family violence, as well as the physical, emotional and psychological harm or risk of harm to the child and any civil or criminal proceedings, order, condition or measure that is relevant to the safety, security and well-being of the child. So what is the role of the foster parent in promoting attachment and emotional ties to family members when the child is unable to live with their family? The goal is to promote ongoing contact with family and community. As such, the foster parent and social workers must arrange for access and visitation with family members. The federal legislation and BC's legislation both prioritise the need for the foster parent to support a child or youth through changes in placement or transitions out of care. How is the federal legislation going to change the care of Indigenous children currently in the continuing custody of a director under the Child and Family Community Services Act? 
So until the Indigenous laws are in place, services to Indigenous children will continue to be provided as directed under the Child, Family and Community Services Act. Every service provider to Indigenous children and families is expected to apply the best interest principles set out in the Federal Act. This means that when an Indigenous child comes into care, service providers will have to consider the child's physical and emotional safety, security and well-being, the importance of that child having an ongoing relationship with their family and community, preserving the child's connection to their culture and all of the best interest factors that we discussed earlier. Reassessment of the child or youth safe placement with parents or family members will be conducted on an ongoing basis to see if placement with a family member or member of community may be possible. Foster parents should expect placement reassessment for Indigenous children and youth to take place routinely. This will include ongoing reassessment in the following circumstances. A reassessment based on the placement priorities must occur at least every six months when an Indigenous child or youth is in an adoption placement until the adoption order is completed. Reassessments will take place for Indigenous children and youth until a permanent transfer of custody has been made. Reassessments will be completed when a previously unknown family member is identified. Reassessments will also take place when a change of placement or legal status is being considered, when requested by the Indigenous community and at the time the care plan is reviewed. The prescribed processes resulting from the federal legislation may seem significantly different from a foster parent's previous experience. But as we work together in the best interests of children and youth in the foster care system, we are supporting the creation of stronger families and communities.